college football, Bowling Green, Toledo. Toledo coach Gary Pinkel rumored to perhaps be headed to Columbia, Missouri, take over the Tigers. Third quarter, 17-10 Rockets. And Tavares Brown throwing the magic bean to Mel Long. 83 yards for the touch, 24-10. Fourth quarter, Toledo up 34-10. It's Chester Taylor. The reason they call Toledo the Rockets is... Yeah. Let's go with these really fast. Okay. 50 yards, 134 yards on the night. 41-10 Rockets. Coach Pinkle, he's moist. Toledo wins a 51-17, finishes the year 10-1. This year's edition in Oxford where the weather was lousy. Second quarter, Ole Miss QB, Romaro Miller outrunning the Bulldog defenders. And see you later. He takes off. And look at Romaro Miller tiptoeing down the sideline. Nice footwork. It's not all Randy Moss on Thursday. That's down to the one. Next play, Deuce McAllister punches it in. Start of a big night for him. The Rebels cut the lead to 16-14. McAllister Thursday became the first Ole Miss player ever to rush for 3,000 yards. Third quarter, 22 with a big hole. 72 yards. He finished with 121 yards on 24 carries. It's 28-16 Mississippi. McAllister playing just two weeks after his brother died after battling scoliosis and respiratory ailments. Later, Dante Walker trying to match McAllister. State cuts the lead to 28-23. Next Bulldog possession. Walker up the middle. 73 yards. Two Walker TDs in four minutes. He finished with 121 yards on 14 carries. And Mississippi State is up 30-28. to What a game. Back and forth we go. Rebels driving. Deuce. He's going to throw for Miller. Deuce McAllister runs for three touchdowns and throws for a fourth. Ole Miss wins 45-30. Snapping a two-game Egg Bowl losing streak, Deuce McAllister broke the Ole Miss single-season touchdown record previously held by Art in Lincoln for the final game of the regular season. Carlos Polk, the captain for the Husker D, playing his last game in Lincoln. Second play from scrimmage. There's Polk. Picks off Craig Oaks, and there he goes. 39 yards for the score. Quickly, it was 7-0. Still the first, and the Huskers have the ball on offense this time. Eric Crouch on the option. Keeps it. Good call. Takes it in. 27 yards for the score. Nebraska 14-0. It's a runaway, right? Eh, maybe not. 14-3 Nebraska second quarter. Colorado's Cortland Johnson takes the pitch. 39 yards. Scamper. 155 yards for him on 26 carries and three TDs. It was 14-10 at the half. Fourth quarter, square at 24. Mark Mariscal on to try a 41-yarder. It's blocked by the Huskers and recovered by the Huskers. Second block field goal for Nebraska on the day. Now they're driving. Crouch keeps it on the option. Again, good call. Third touchdown for Crouch on the day. 31-24. Huskers under four minutes to go. Colorado at midfield, third and 12. Oaks to Johnson. Stops short, but watch him fight for the yardage. He sees the yellow line. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Drive continues for Colorado. Under a minute to go at the Nebraska 15. Oaks to John Minardi, who pulls it down. Oaks 25 of 41 for 254. A true freshman. Buffs cut the lead to one. Colorado going for two and the lead. Oaks caught by Javon Green. Colorado converts. Oaks ecstatic. Colorado takes a one-point lead and watch it again. Green almost dropped it but recovered and made the catch. On the ensuing kick, Colorado trying a little chicanery. The squib and Nebraska's Deron Dietrich returns it to the Husker 42. So the Huskers in good position. Crouch finding the former QB, Bobby Newcomb, over the middle, 13 yards. 10 seconds to go. No timeouts. Crouch tried it once, he'll try it again. Looking for Newcomb. Finds him. Out of bounds at the 12. Five seconds to go. Here comes Josh Brown to win it from 29 yards. It is up. It is good. Ball game. Gary Barnett has got to be in disbelief. Yeah, he is. An emotional loss for Colorado and let the Husker celebration begin. Nebraska wins 34-32. It's all about Josh Brown. He was three for seven on field goals entering the game and had missed a potential game winner two weeks ago against K-State. He said he was thinking, don't yank it. Please don't yank it. Eric Crouch ran 19 times for 125 yards and three scores, and the Huskers' slim BCS hopes are alive.
you're never out of a game. Uh, and so, consequently, if we knew if we could use the out-of-bounds line a little bit, move the ball down the field, just give us a chance to get a position, to get a field goal, we could win the game. So it wasn't out of the question to, uh, to get it done. I thought our guys responded very well under pressure. Uh, it's a typical Nebraska-Colorado football game, very physical, hard-hitting. It's Nebraska-Colorado. It's, uh, it's always going to be a battle. Um, you know, it's, it's the game they point to all season. It's, you know, it's a game we look forward to as well. So it's, it's always going to be a battle. Nebraska was favored by 20. First play from scrimmage for the Aggies. Mark Ferris, the former minor league baseball player. That's an error. Greg Brown makes his seven zip horns. It was 10-7 Texas. Chris Sims then handing to Roy Williams, third quarter. Williams, the freshman out of Permian High, that great program in Odessa. He goes 40 for the score. It's 17-7 Longhorns. Still in the third. Sims to Williams. Roy fourth in the country at over 21 yards per catch. Phil Sims beaming, 24-14. What a third quarter for Sims. He's got the other freshman, Sloan Thomas, who shakes loose and then bakes the secondary. 31-14, Texas. The third quarter still has some life left in it. Sims, a little play action, fixated on the frosh. There's another freshman, B.J. Johnson, 187 receiving yards to break the freshman record set by Roy Williams earlier in the year. And the Longhorns romp, 43-17. They have won nine games in each of the last three seasons. They are likely headed to either the Cotton or Holiday Bowl. Some college football rivalries, starting off with West Virginia and Pitt, the backyard brawl. First quarter, no score. Kevin Barlow up the middle, breaks a couple of tackles. And there he goes, 56-yard touchdown, one of four on the day. And Pitt ruining Don Nalen's exit, 38-28. to LSU taking on Arkansas. First quarter, we're scoreless. Quentin Caver picks off Josh Booty. That's the second booty in this show. Goes in for a 33-yard touchdown. Arkansas, 14-3 winners. Bowl eligible at 6-5. and five. Arizona State and Arizona in the third. 17-13 Zona. Clarence Farmer fumbling in the end zone. That's bad. Terrell Suggs recovers for the TD. And after the game, Arizona coach Dick Tomey with some very striking news for his players. More on that later. Arizona State Bowl eligible at 6-5. and five. BYU and Utah and LaBelle Edwards in his last game with the Cougars, who looks like he always has looked. Late in the fourth, BYU up 26-20. Darnell Arsenault complete to Matt Meikle. 20 yards for the touchdown. Utah up 27-26. A minute to go, fourth and 13 for BYU. Brandon Doman launching to Jonathan Pittman. It's a first down. Second and one for BYU on the four. It's a scramble. Doman's going to take it in himself for the touchdown. BYU in thrilling fashion, 34-27, the end of an era for Coach Edwards. It's been quite a week, this last game, and then, then tonight, and uh, the whole thing. And uh, I, I just uh, been so blessed all my life to have good health to last this long and, uh, and to do something that I've loved. And, uh, but, you know, the, regardless of how it went this year, whatever, the, the, this was it. And... Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's been great, and it's time. Tomlinson turns the corner, and he is gonzo. 74-yard score, 16-nothing Horned Frogs. Tomlinson in this game became the eighth different player to rush for 2,000 yards in a single collegiate season. More on that momentarily. In the fourth, it's 55-7 to seven from five yards deep. LaTerrence Dunbar takes it back and somebody forgot to tackle Mr. Dunbar. 100-yard return for a score. 61-7, to TCU leading. Somebody bring me a skillet. Casey Printers holds it up. Four touchdowns passing and rushing for him. It was all about LaDainian Tomlinson. Cracks the 2,000-yard rushing mark. We told you that. He and Ricky Williams, the only two collegians. Butkus finalist Rocky Kalmus rushing Aso Pogai and forcing him to chuck it. Intentional grounding. It's a safety. The Sooners take a 12-zip lead at half. You think everything's fine, but not. Tatum Bell taking the pitch and Tatum galloping away from the defense. 60 yards later, it is 12-7 Oklahoma. The Pokes within five. Fourth quarter, same score. Josh Heupel, which is 19 of 36. Picked twice, rough day. And Jermaine Thomas drags him down here. Fourth down for the Sooners. So kicker Tim Duncan for three. 
Tim Duncan cannot shoot the three. That is no good. Bob Simmons in his final game, thinking upset. Fourth quarter, Poe Guy, the red shirt freshman, finds Curry Jackson first down. The drive continues for the boys. Same situation, Poe Guy to Rashawn Woods. There he is, 12 yard pickup. Another first down for Oklahoma State. Third and goal from the 12, Poe Guy. Under pressure. Just got to throw it away. He gets leveled in the process. Fourth and goal now. Cowboys down five. They decide to go for six. Pogai, you got to get up. And they get nothing. Derek straight breaks it up. The Sooners hold on. It's a tale of two Bobs. Bob Stoops keeps those national title hopes alive. Bob Simmons' final game, 12-7 the final. Josh Heupel's Heisman hopes took a hit. More on that in a second. The Sooners own the nation's longest winning streak at 11. They get K-State in the Big 12 title game next week after dodging the Cowboys' bullet. We're extremely proud of being 11 and all the not too many teams in, in this football uh, tradition have been that. Um, so we're excited about that uh, and excited about the opportunity going, going up and playing in Kansas City next week. Fortunately, we uh, made enough big plays and, and enough plays in the game uh, to win the game, and uh, especially down the stretch. Uh, you look at the great uh, goal line uh, stand uh, there uh, at the end of the game, as well as offense to, uh, to chew up the remaining part of the clock. Heupel had those huge games against ranked teams like Texas, K-State, and Nebraska in October. His numbers have dropped off after Halloween. His 154 passing yards Saturday, his career low at Oklahoma. His Heisman hopes may have drifted away in the process. Santana Moss in Miami trying to overload the BCS computers with a big number against BC. Second quarter, Ken Dorsey finds Moss. It's 10-6 Canes. Dorsey with five touchdown passes, tying a school record held by Bernie Tosar and Steve Walsh. Third quarter, Dorsey again finds Santana Moss. 31-6 Miami. Dorsey 17-26, 252 yards. The five TDs, a career high. Well, Moss was also setting school records later in the third. He fields the punt, and Santana Moss keeps on matriculating the ball up the field. 85 yards. Moss with 4,402 career yards, breaking Otis Anderson's Miami record set in 1978. It's 44-6. But watch this. After the punt return, the refs called double unsportsmanlike penalties, one for the celebration, another for throwing oranges, one of which hit a referee. So the extra point is from 50 yards away. No problem for Todd C. Davis. He, he drills it. Butch Davis gets a shower and the big number he may have needed. Miami blows out BC 52-6. First Big East title for the Hurricanes since 96. Their 11th straight win over Boston College. Now, Canes athletic director Paul D said Saturday night he's given Alabama permission to talk to Butch Davis about the Tides head coaching vacancy. D also offered Davis an extension on his current contract, which has three years still to go, saying, quote, we're doing everything we can to keep him. The ball is in his court. Well, once more into the breach, we go 72nd time we've done this, the showcase game. Bob Davey hoping a win will get his team a BCS bowl berth. Fasia Milo blocking for Petros Papadakis. No one consulted a sportscaster before that play, but a lot of syllables. They do pick up the first, and then Carson Palmer faking the handoff and getting in. Ties this one up at seven. Second quarter, same score, Matt Lavecchio faking the handoff. It's all about faking the handoff. The Irish haven't lost since Lavecchio took the reins seven games ago. They're up 14 set. Next USC possession, Palmer back to pass, going for Kareem Kelly. A little too much loft. Tony Driver, if I'm not mistaken, that is a turnover. Driver is shifty. Palmer finally hornswoggles him right there. Nice tackle, sets up a Notre Dame touchdown. However, 21-7 Irish at that juncture. Palmer, he is not gun shot. He's looking for Kelly again, and he's got him. Palmer, 17 of 35 for 251. USC cuts the Irish lead to 21-14. Third quarter, a little play action fake, and we all bite on it. Where, there's Lavecchio, chucking for Javon Hunter. The Irish only threw the ball 14 times, but that's to the five. Sets up a fourth and goal out of the wishbone. Lavecchio options to himself. The Irish win this one 38 to 21. It wasn't long ago Bob Davey was feeling the pressure. Now he's 9 and 2 and likely headed to the Fiesta Sugar Bowl. USC AD Mike Garrett said only he's still deliberating about Paul Hackett's future. Hackett, who's rumored to be out. First quarter, tech down 7 0. Vic 
scrambling and uh oh it's that ankle again and he would need to be helped off the field but he would come back tech down a touchdown and Vic scrambling on that bag bad leg and see he's sort of gimping around he loses his helmet on the play gutty gutsy performance he found his hat he would stay around and he would give the ball to Lee Suggs a lot Suggs, nice move, and back, and there he goes. 22 carries, 116 yards, we're tied at 14. Late in the second, Tech up by seven. Vic, scrambling around, eluding, guys, where, there he is, as only he can, and then finally chucking for Suggs, his first career touchdown reception, four scores in all on the night for Suggs, who now has 28 touchdowns on the year, as Tech doubles up Virginia. The 28 touchdowns, a Big East record. Vic ran for just 27 yards, but he was some hedges. It's the Governor's Cup. First quarter, no score. Tech driving. George Godsey, not considered fleet of foot, but there goes George. 33 yards straight to the zone. Tech up 7-0. Later in the quarter, Tech's next possession, Godsey. Thrown to the wrong laundry. Picked by Jamie Henderson. Godsey's first interception in 133 pass attempts. Very next play, Corey Phillips drops back and oof. Hit by Corey Collins when Corey's collide. The fumble comes loose. Turnover leads to a Tech touchdown. Second quarter. The pass deflected. Daryl Smith picks it off. And Daryl gets to some sideline. 69 yards later, Tech has a 27-3 lead. They hold on to the 27-15 win. They have won three in a row over their in-state rivals. Tech has run off seven straight wins now. Tennessee and Vandy at Adelphia Coliseum. Fourth quarter, Vandy down nine and driving. Jared McGrath gets to the outside, end of the one-yard line. Two plays later, Jared burrows in. The Commodores cut the lead to 28-26. Tennessee ball, trying to chew some clock. Travis Henry, this guy is a stud. Picks up the big first down, 184 yards rushing and two scores. But he gets injured with less than 45 to go as they're just taking a knee. And he took a little bit of a leg, a little ankle injury. It wasn't serious, and the balls do hold on.